Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 472, concatenated words. Before we get into the question prompt, I just want to ask you guys, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Given an array of strings words without duplicates, return all the concatenated words in the given list of words. A concatenated word is defined as a string that is comprised entirely of at least two shorter words in the given array. So let's look at our words here. We have cat, cats, cats, dog, cats, dog, dog, cats, dog, hippopotamuses, rat, rat, cat, dog, cat. So let's go through the words and see if we can actually build them from at least two other words. So cat, I mean, that's a single word. We can't really do anything with it there. So this one we can't do. Cats, I mean, we could break it up with cat, but we don't have just an S, so that doesn't work. What about cats, dog, cats? Well, we have cats, we have dog, and we have cats. So this is actually a solution. Dog, we can't really do anything with it. It's a single word. What about dog, cats, dog? Well, we know we have dog, we have cats, and we have dog. So this is also a solution. Hippopotamuses, nothing we can really do there. We can't really break it up. Rat, single word, so we can't really do much with it. Rat, cat, dog, cat. Well, we have rat, we have cat, we have dog, and we can reuse the cat. So this is also a solution. So looking at this problem and kind of visually scoping it out, it's quite simple, right? You can pretty much uh, determine this with your eyes, uh, which words you can build. But obviously, that's not how algorithms work. So we're going to need to type something up to do it. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, isn't this really similar to word break where we were essentially doing the same thing? And you're right, it is basically the same thing, except this time we're not trying to separate a big word, we're actually trying to make a big word from other words. So we're essentially doing the exact opposite of what we did in word break. So let's think about how we might solve this problem in a similar way, but obviously adapt it given that the circumstances are a little bit different. So let's kind of wipe away all of this text uh, that we have and look at an example. Okay, so we looked at a simple example, but it's not really clear how we want to solve this problem. So what we want to do is we want to basically iterate through all of our words and see which ones can be built by other words that we can form here. And one of the first things that we want to do is actually transform our list here into a set. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want to basically be able to do constant time lookups to see if some of these smaller words are actually inside of the set here uh, and whether or not we can reuse them. Obviously, if we kept that as a list and we were doing lookups, that's going to be a big O of N uh, for each one, whereas with a set, we can do it in constant time. So that's the first thing that we want to do is actually transform this into a set. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each word individually, right? So let's start with cat. So with cat, what we want to do is we want to split it such that we have a prefix and a suffix. So we're essentially going to go index by index and split the word uh, you know, to the left of there. So for example, we would start at the beginning and we'd split it, right? So everything to the left of our split is C and everything to the right is at. If both of these can form a valid word, then we know that cat can be um, you know, formed by two words. Obviously, there's no word C, there's no word with at, therefore, we can't use that split. So we're going to go to the next one, right? We're going to try CA. Does that work? Um, no, it doesn't, right? And we can essentially then try cat. But, you know, cat is a word on itself, but we don't have another word here. Therefore, we need to use two words. So we can't just use cat, right? So cats doesn't work. Sorry, cat doesn't work. And similarly, cats is not going to work because even though we could split it and get cat here, we don't actually have that S anywhere. So we can't do anything here. Now let's look at an example that actually works, right? So let's look at cats, uh, dog, cats, right? So we're going to do our splits. So we're going to try to split on the C. Obviously, this isn't a word and at dog cats is not uh, a word that we can make. So that's not a valid split. So again, we're going to try the next one, CA, nothing we can do there, and also nothing we can do with the right here. So now we split on the T and we get cat. Okay, 
we know that cat is a word because it's in our word set so that part is fine but this leaves the question and you know this is how this problem kind of is a divide and conquer because we can break it down into smaller parts now we need to check basically whether or not we can uh, build s dog uh, cats and obviously we can't do that because of this s here is going to give us problems so this split isn't valid right we can't split at that t even though we could form the cats here uh, the cat sorry now we're going to split on the s so now we have cats on the left and dog cats on the right again we know that cats is fine because it's in our word set so that part is okay now we need to determine whether or not this right side can actually be made up right so we're going to do dog cats here and we're going to do the exact same thing so we're going to try to split on the d nothing we can do there split on the o nothing we can do there split on the g so now the left is dog and the right is cats so dog is a word in our word list and cats is a word in our word list therefore this one can be formed and since we are able to form the left here with cats and dog cats can be broken into dog and cats this is also fine therefore cats uh, dog cats is one of our solutions and essentially we would do the rest of these words and again we would determine that this is an answer and this is an answer in the similar way and notice that uh, we have some repetition here right cats comes up multiple times so what we can actually do is we can use a memo dict here to actually store whether or not a word uh, actually works so what we want to do is basically just the opposite of word break we're going to instead of trying to break up the word we're going to be trying to build it up and you know we're just going to use depth first search with some memoization to do that pretty straightforward basically the exact same code that we use for word break except basically flipped so enough blabbing let's go to the code editor and actually type this up it's really simple you'll see it's just a few lines of code so i'll see you in the editor let's test okay we are back in the code editor let's type this up i told you that the first thing that we want to do is actually create a word set so we can have easy lookups within our word list here right so we're going to say word set is going to be a set with all of our words and we also want to use a memoization dictionary here to help store results that we've already seen before so we don't have to recompute uh, them because there will be some duplicates here so we're going to say memo and it's just going to be an empty dictionary now what we want to do is actually define our depth first search function uh, where we'll be doing all the work so we're going to say def dfs and we're going to pass in a word and what we're going to do here is now we need to iterate index by index as we saw so we're going to say for i in range from one to the length of the word what we want to do is we want to say that the prefix here is going to equal the word up until the ith index and the suffix here is going to be the word uh, from the ith index on now what we want to do is we want to check whether or not we can actually build something valid on the left and build something valid on the right so we're going to say if prefix uh, in word set so basically if the prefix is a word that we can uh, you know pull from our word set uh, obviously the prefix is going to be the smaller word and the suffix is going to be the larger one as we go um, and essentially what we want to do there is check whether or not the suffix can be broken down so if the prefix is one of the words in our word set and uh, the, the suffix has to be able to be built so the suffix can either be in the word set or we can actually call our DFS function on the suffix and if it returns true uh, therefore it can be built so if either of these conditions are met uh, this will be true here and then if both of these are true that means that we can actually build our word here and we can say return true otherwise we have to return false because we can't actually build it here so what we want to do here is uh, you know basically check all the combinations as soon as we have one that works we can actually stop um, otherwise we'll just continue until the end and we'll return false if we couldn't do anything with that word that's our DFS function all we need to do now is just to find our answer which is going to be an empty list now we need to go through all of the words in the word list that we were given and basically check whether or not we can um, build them so we're going to say for word in words what we're going to do now we're going to say if dfs on that word uh, returns true obviously our dfs function uh, returns true or false if it's true that means we could build a word with concatenating them uh, then we want to add that word to our actual answer here because it's a valid solution 
And at the end, all we need to do is return the answer. Like I said, really simple. As you can see, this is like what 20 lines of code. And then that doesn't even include this define uh, functions here. So uh, where is my submit button? And let's submit it. And cool, accepted. So whoops, how do I get this? Uh, all right, so what is the time and space complexity here? So let's think about this. Obviously, the word set is going to take a uh, big O of n time to make, but that part isn't really within the loop, so we can kind of ignore it because the time complexity is mostly going to come from here. So obviously, we are iterating over all of the words in our word set, so that's going to be big O of n, where n is the you know number of words, right? Now what we're going to do is uh, we need to uh, iterate over each of the words. So in the worst case, they're all the same length. So you know this is going to be big O of n. Um, so obviously we have to iterate over the the word. So it's going to have you know n characters in it, and you know this slicing it here is going to take uh, big O of n time. So that means that the entirety of our DFS function is going to take uh, big O of n squared, right? Because checking the prefix is going to cost uh, you know constant time because we made it into a set. Same thing here with the suffix, and then going into the DFS, that's a separate function in and of itself. So what we can say here is that the this DFS function is going to be um, big O of n squared. So that means that we have a big O of n squared function inside of big O of n function. Therefore, our total time complexity here is going to be big O of n cubed, uh, which is the exact same thing as word break. If you remember, um, this problem is basically just word break in reverse. So space complexity, it's going to be the same as uh, word break. It's going to be big O of n because of the word set here and our memo dictionary, uh, where we're actually basically storing uh, all of the intermediate words. So that is going to be your time and space complexity for this problem. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.